everyone, and welcome to Looking to the East. I'm your host, Steve Zerker. I'm a professor and dean at Kansai Gaidai University. Thank you very much for uh, tuning into the show. We have a very interesting topic today. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about women professionals, working women in Japan, which uh, has some complications, as we'll get into through the course of this half hour. Marianne and I have been working together, I don't know, how long has it been, 10 years or so? Marianne, with the American Chamber of Commerce. Marianne recently was the uh, chairwoman of the Women in Business Diversity Inclusion Committee with the ACCJ. And uh, she's a businesswoman herself. She does coaching workshops focusing on women empowerment. So thank you, Marianne, for attending today. And um, I also have one of my former students with me today. So she's here. She's getting ready to start her professional life. She's graduated, or she will graduate very soon from Kansai Gaida University. Um, she uh, will be starting <clears throat> working at a tech company up in Tokyo. It's based in Tokyo, right? Yeah. Is, is that correct? Yeah, just starting. So Chihiro, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for attending and uh, being a part of this. Thank you. Yeah. So what triggered uh, this show in my mind was about a month or so ago, Eric, if we can pull up the picture of uh, Mori-san. Uh, this individual, yeah, there we go. He is a former prime minister of the country. He's uh, in his 80s. He was the president of the Japan Olympic Committee. About a month or so ago, uh, in response to a question about uh, diversity on the uh, Japan Olympic Committee, that is including more women, uh, his response, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, was that, uh, well, the thing about women is that they take too long to explain things and uh, that we would have to limit their time on the committee because listening to them is annoying. And uh, this caused a tremendous negative reaction and there were immediate calls for him to resign. Uh, and eventually he did resign. So this triggered once again, um, an analysis or a look at the role of women in the workplace and also in government in Japan. And this is an ongoing issue. Mary Ann and I have been working on this for a long, long time. In addition, um, a, a graph from The Economist came out just a few days ago, and uh, hopefully we can get that up. But otherwise, if not, it shows a list of the countries in terms of rankings to be the best place for working women. Number one is Sweden. Number two is Iceland. Uh, number three is Finland. So we go through the Scandinavian countries, continue through Slova Slovakia, Italy, Hungary, Australia, US, Israel, Czech, Netherlands, Greece, Turkey, and then Japan. So Japan is ranked 28th, not last on this list. Uh, South Korea is lower. And I've worked in South Korea and actually it is harder for working women in South Korea, based on my observation, than it is in Japan. So these uh, events and this graph made me think that it would be good to bring in some women, professional women from Japan, uh, either starting their career, or in the case of Marianne, someone who's been working for uh, quite a number of years. How long have you been in uh, Japan, Marianne, now? Well, I came as a student, so if I include all of those years, 30 years. Yeah. Right. So, Marianne, what, what do you think about this? You, you were the leader of the Women in Business Committee. Uh, we were the first committee to form in the Kansai region. Uh, we created this, this kind of, uh, of organization and effort to try and empower mm -hmm. women. We've, we've been, you've been involved with it a long time as a leader for many, many years. What is your opinion about Mori and about this graphic from The Economist listing Japan 28? Uh, what, what, you know, we've worked so hard, but it doesn't seem to be, we don't seem to be making much progress. I mean, I, I hope that's not an unfair statement, but what do you mm. think? Well, I, I could be called optimistic. Uh, certainly what you've shown is, doesn't bring around feelings of hope. Um, I think Maury is an 83 year old man. And I think if you ask most 83 year old men, you may get some kind of similar statement. This is not excusing at all what he said, but it highlighted where we are, you know, that we're not moving forward. However, 
if we look at younger generations, I think that we can see a real shift in expectations around what women will do, what partners, you know, that partners would be working women. And they've, they've shown that actually, um, I saw some data from, um, that was out of, from Kathy Moxley at Goldman Sachs, and it showed that the number of millennial um, males expecting wives to be housewives versus working women had completely shifted. So those numbers had shifted. So I do think that we're up for some improvement in the future, but I do agree that the numbers are extremely depressing. And in fact, at most, Jap particularly at Japanese companies, meaning not foreign capital-based companies, the mm -hmm. situation for women is still pretty dire. Yeah. Yeah, well, we have a, a young woman. Uh, you're, you're, you're not a millennial. Yeah, you know, you're, you're I, too young. You're, not you're too young for that, right? <laughs> yeah, you're, I don't okay. know what's next, but uh, you're, <laughs> you're, you're just graduating from college. Uh, yeah. But before before we turn to you, one other thing I'd like to point out to the audience is that uh, it's not only the efforts of of people like Marianne and myself who uh, have a because of our maybe our Western background, our own personal beliefs, uh, want to try and make it better for women. I, I'm the dean of the uh, Asian Studies program. I've hired 50% of my hires over the last uh, three and a half years have been women, and that's not by accident. I've been doing that on purpose. So. Those of us at an individual level are trying to contribute <clears throat> to empowering women and to try and diversify the professors at my university. Uh, but also the government under the previous Prime Minister Abe, when he came in, uh, in part because of Kathy Matsui, who uh, Marianne just mentioned, uh, made uh, diversity and inclusion of women one of the central pillars of his uh, economic efforts, his revitalization of Japan, and he targeted women uh, management and representation in the government at 30%. And uh, over the last 10 years, since he's made those announcements, it, it has not changed. In fact, the government recently rescinded its 30% goal uh, for 2020, because it's not even close. The numbers in Japan run around seven or 8% for higher management and also for government representation, which is why Japan's rated so low. So Chihiro, do you agree with Marianne? that uh, your generation offers some hope despite all of these negative numbers and reports and the failure of the Abe government to do anything really to help. In fact, the ranking of Japan has gone down over the last 10 years rather than gone up yeah. under this initiative. Um, well, I agree with the heart. Like, well, you know, like the, so what he said, what Maurice said was, um, something very negative, but I think the society and education made him, I mean, like, um, he, like when he born, he, when he was born, like he doesn't think about like, oh, men are better than women or something like that. Just the society, the, the Japanese society and education made him. And um, actually older people in Japan think the same thing, I, I, I think. And um, in terms now, of the I, progress, well, uh, let me ask you: by older, oh, is that like over twenty-five or over thirty-five? Oh, older, uh, like over fifty. Um, what does older mean? 50, to you? 60. 50, 60. Um, okay. That's that's us, Mary. Yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling a little old. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, don't apologize. No, Please, um, go ahead. just okay. Um. But, uh, but you think oh, I your, your, what generation, I said. Well, your, your generation um, thinks differently? I, mean, <clears throat> I think my generation, um, I don't know. I think it's, it's up, to the, up to the person. But comparing with like 50s and 60s, our generation is still um, like equal between men and women. Really? Like, I don't know. I, I think so. I hope so. Okay. In my class, you were in my class last semester, you gave several presentations about uh, women, uh, opportunity in Japan, and also diversity. How, yeah. how did the other students respond to that? I mean, I, I responded positively. I think I gave you an A in my class, if I remember right. Um, mm -hmm. But did the other students say, oh, that was a good presentation, and they agreed with what you were talking about? 
Um, yes, I mean, like, uh, during the presentation, um, like, they just responded to like, oh, yeah, I agree with me, I agree with me, and mm -hmm. um, still, like, there is a lot of issue um, about the equality between men and women in Japan, um, and it's, um, it's one of, like, culture thing, you know, like, it's about something something about the culture you know like culturally men were like men were treated better than women in japan it's not a it's not in japan i mean like it's not only in japan but japan has such a strong sense of that the concept that men are better than women and it's still continuing and yeah okay all right, I want to get back to you and ask you about uh, uh, how you're starting your career and, and uh, the company that you've chosen. But Marianne, maybe I can talk to you a little bit. You, you uh, have been focusing on in women empowerment now as a part of your professional career. Can you explain to me uh, how you do that and uh, uh, what the results are and so forth? You're touching individual women and trying to uh, show them that uh, perhaps their professional goals can be greater than what they think they are, or maybe they can rise higher in the company than what they maybe previously thought. This is an issue I see sometimes with my students, not with Chihiro. She fortunately is very progressive, and I, I can predict that she'll do very well. But many times when I talk to women at the university level, uh, their own dreams are, are um restricted by what they believe they're able to do because Japan's culture, like Chihiro was talking about, mm -hmm. is telling them that their role is not in business or not as a professional career. Not, maybe not directly, but certainly indirectly that's there. Yeah, there are a lot of stereotypes, I think, that start when, you know, when we're in school, when, when we're looking for role models, who do we see on TV? Who do we see, you know, what are the roles that we see people playing? Little by little, I, I, I like to see some wins in that category. But I think before I talk about the work I do, I think you've touched on something really important, which is not only do women not see themselves as, you know, able to do it because they've been told they shouldn't. But the way that uh, the Japan's work ethic, it doesn't make it very attractive. <laughs> you know, I think if we <laughs> looked at how people worked, you know, that if you're working for a traditional company, uh, let's just imagine you're a man because, you know, most people are probably um, currently less women are managers. They come home at nine or 10 at night. They have a little bit of time. They go to sleep mm -hmm. and they go back in the morning and it continues. And I think part of this is that if you want to have working women, women need a partner who can support in the home as well. And this is really hard if your partner is coming home at 10 o'clock. So it can't be that policies to support women, oh, women, you can go home early just to pick up your kid and your, your husband, you know, and men, you still have to work till 10 o'clock. This isn't helpful. You know, we need some overall reform in how we think about work so that mm. it, it looks possible to have both because you can also have a partner who can be around. And this is why the Iceland, not Icelandic, the Scandinavian countries are always at the top because they have societal structures in place that allow people to have lives outside of work. And I think that's really what we all want. Um, and mm. to quote, you know, Kathy Matsig, and I heard her speak that she actually has more young men coming now to talk about work-life balance than women even, that, that everyone really wants a sustainable lifestyle. And so I think one piece of that is making work look doable. And the other piece is, of course, what you said, helping women to feel confident, to project confidence. And that's a lot of what I do is around executive presence and how to help women look ready. They may be ready, but they may not be looking ready to the um, people around them. So helping bring out that inner confidence and, and help them look a little more um, ready for the next step. Interesting. Okay. So Chihiro, you are taking your first step into a professional career. You're joining a tech company. Yes. And uh, I'm sure you thought about 
the working condition. I, I, it seems to be in my email communication that you're you're already working for them. It seems like you're so busy, you're not even getting paid yet, right? Because you don't officially start until April first. Yeah. But you told me you've been going to Tokyo and making trips, so they're making you busy already. Did this point that uh, Marianne raised, and I think it's a very interesting, important one about working conditions in Japan are obsessive, not just for women, but also for men as well. Is that something you thought about? Yes, because like our generation, especially like younger generation, like focus on the balance between like working and just private, you know, life. So yeah, I think it's very important to have the, the, that good balance between them. Okay, so when you uh, interviewed with your company, did you try and get a sense that you can do that? You'll be able to have a balanced work life. And also another question that I was kind of alluding to earlier was, uh, is your company one where there are women in management or you feel that as a woman, you'll have a fair chance? Have you thought um, about those things or are, are you just... You know, you're happy to have a job with a tech company. It sounds like a very good opportunity for you. Well, um, I would love to have the balance between working and private like life. Um, even I am young, like kind of young, but it seems a little bit harder for me to like to take the balance when I was um, when I just start start the, the 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 job because you know there is a lot of things that I have to learn and that I have to remember. Right. And, you know, it's just like, a, um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of things that I have to like input. Um, and so I think it's kind of hard for me to take the balance. I don't know, until maybe, I don't know, like um, in four years, three years, I don't know. Okay. And yeah. All right. And did you check out the company? Does it have women leaders in it? Uh, so I I have to say, that, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I come from the tech industry and it's it's awful. At least in Silicon Valley, yeah. it's pretty much dominated by men. Now, there's some exceptions, of course, uh, like yeah. the the CEO COO at Facebook. Yeah, there's a few, but for the most part, it's dominated yeah. by men. <clears throat> exactly. Okay, so you're, the company you're joining is the managers are, are primarily men? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Marianne, what, what kind of advice would you offer Chihiro as she's starting her career? It sounds like, and I can certainly understand that she's feeling that uh, for the uh, initial years of working in professional life, she has to pay her dues. So maybe this work-life balance issue will not be one that uh, she can achieve potentially. But uh, if she was in one of your workshops, so what advice do you would you offer to her? Put you on the spot, uh, Marianne. Oh no, that's fine. Um, I think the about work life balance. I think I've also heard it called, you know, work life equilibrium. That really it's not a balance, but there's different times in life when we have a different amount of time that we can, you know, balance looks different at different times in life. So Tahir, I think you've done a great job of um, you know, thinking about that in advance. But what I would if I was going to give you advice. I would have a couple of things I'd say. And one is that as women, as females, we often grow up um, with this idea that, well, if I do a good job and I do my work on time, I'll be recognized and I'll get a promotion. And in the work world, we need to be a little, we need to make more efforts to be visible, you know, to make sure that our work is being seen, that we're building relationships with people who can support us, that we're talking about what we want to achieve. And I appreciate there are cultural differences um, in this, you know, between maybe how it would be discussed um, in Japanese or in a Japanese company versus perhaps in an American or a foreign capital company. But it's still really important to be not just keep your head down and do the work, but to be really proactive in showing what you can do and what you want to do. That's one thing. And the second is around feedback and, and criticism. And as we work, you know, I think particularly women and, and I men as well, but particularly women, when we get constructive feedback or negative feedback, we take it really personally. And I think there's a real difference in how um, women and men or boys and girls growing up react to that kind of criticism. And so to look at feedback as 
simply information from the person giving you the feedback. Not that I'm good or bad, but oh, that person prefers a work style like this or prefers me to do my work like this. And so to not take things internally, but to just take them as information that you can evaluate and decide what you wanna do with it. So um, not over emphasizing uh, what you hear because you know, like you said, some people are gonna be older. They may not have the same mindset and the same you know, aspirations that you have. So not to let that impact what you wanna do and the dreams that you have for yourself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think the visibility point is a good one. And I think Japanese uh, students, men and women, are both taught to be very humble and to not present themselves too strongly uh, because that would be considered to be too aggressive. Uh, whereas, uh, Hiro, you, you, you've taken classes with foreign students and do you know how noisy they are? And they're uh, yeah. the Europeans, they're always talking, right? So it's hard for Japanese people yeah. men or women to get a word in otherwise. So that culture uh, teaches people to be more aggressive and and stand up for themselves. My wife went to Berkeley. Uh, Berkeley's like a, uh, a zoo. Everyone is raising their hand. Harvard's this way too. Everyone's trying to raise their hand because you're being graded on how often you speak. Yeah. So I think that's a very good point that uh, in general that uh, Marianne makes and I think in particular for Japanese women. So we're, we're getting close to time here. I wanna end on a positive note. Despite all of this, you know, unfortunate comments from leading government officials and the economist rating and other aspects. Uh, probably, Marianne, I don't know if you'd agree with me. It seems to me that uh, the change in Japan in terms of women having a greater impact will occur on an individual by individual basis. It'll kind of be a grassroots movement. I, I just don't see leadership coming from the government uh, and so forth. So it'll take women to move through the ranks to be up at higher levels so where they can set policy, where they can begin to change the work environment to encourage women. And uh, you and I both know an example of an extremely successful Japanese woman, uh, Mari Nogami. Mm -hmm. She's now a president level at Takeda, which is the largest pharmaceutical company. Uh, she worked at Procter & Gamble and then went to AstraZeneca. So she's climbed up the ladder and is probably one of the highest ranked women in Japan that we know. And she was a founder of the Women in Business Committee at the American Chamber of Commerce. So Marianne, maybe some, you know her better than I do, maybe some comments on how she has been able to achieve this incredible success. Yeah, Mari is a, a great success story. And it was funny in advance of this, I was curious, how many Japanese CEOs could I, female CEOs could I name? And there, there, it's true, there weren't that many, <laughs> but she is a, a lovely story. And um, I think Mari's success has to do with being very um, clear on what she wanted. She talks a lot about how we market ourselves and putting, figuring out what your strengths are and how you can work towards your strengths to differentiate yourself. So she, I believe, has a marketing background and has done several sessions for young leaders that I've observed I'm talking about that. And so she's obviously done that uh, herself and moved herself through knowing that she wanted to lead a company one day. And as you said, now president of um, Takeda Consumer Healthcare um, right. and okay. continuing to encourage. What I love is to see her giving back and continuing to mentor um, both men and women, but particularly encouraging women to find their difference, uh, to find the I'm not a marketer, so now I get the blue sea and the red sea confused. But anyway, to find the ocean where you can, you know, really um, show your show your stuff and and succeed. So I think she and then Eriko Asai, you know, the president of GE, another great right. example. Um, right. And uh, and recently, you know, Uniqlo, um, Yan Aisan appointed the first uh, female CEO of Uniqlo. I think that was wow, last year. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, well, I actually just saw it online, so I should perhaps check my sources before I oh, okay. speak on TV, but I was like, oh, I didn't know that either. So that was um, in encouraging. Yeah. 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 For the, for the non-Japanese viewer, Yanai is the CEO president of Uniglo, uh, one of the wealthiest uh, individuals in Japan. And, and I, I've attended a presentation by him. He is in his own way, a very progressive uh, in how he manages his company and uh, supports diversity and leadership development. So I'm not surprised that he's one of the people who is making uh, progress on that front. 
So Chihiro, I guess we, the last question, we have like one minute left or so now before we have to close. What, what are your goals? Uh, what, what are, you, are you gonna become the president of the company you're joining at some point? Or are you gonna start your own business down the road? What, what do you see unfolding for your professional career? Well, um, so being so being a leader in like IT industry still like is still hard like for women especially for women. So I want to be a kind of model, um, being a like leader, um, in IT tech IT technology industry. So like maybe I want to be like CIO or something like that. Okay. Right, so that makes me think uh, Marianne of Nambasan, the DNA. Yeah, DNA. There is a yeah. woman. Yeah, she's probably the most famous woman to hear. You should you should study her. She was a consultant okay. to McKinsey and then started her own business. And I read just recently she is now the president of the Kedaren. She's the first, or not president. I think like vice president, or she's on the executive board. On the executive board, right? Yeah, that's what it was. So the very first female to be included in that club which previously had been only men for decades and decades. And that's important because then, you know, young women like Chihiro see a visual. Oh, there's a woman in there too. And hopefully soon then it will be two, not the token. And I don't mean token, but I mean, more is better, right? I mean, we don't think anything of seeing a 90% male board. So what if it is, you know, wouldn't it be amazing to see a 90% yeah. female board? <laughs> go Chihiro, go. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. We're, we have to wrap up, we're running out of time. As I mentioned, Marianne, this just flies back when we're, flies through the, the show when we're on air. Yeah. So we've gone through the 30 minutes, we have to wrap up. So Chihiro, thank you so much. Uh, for thank uh, participating you. and sharing your opinions and uh, your ideas with us, Marianne. Of course, thank you so much for uh, participating in this. And, thanks for asking. And thanks for your work and, and trying to make uh, it better in Japan and uh, having women feel that they can do more and be more successful in their careers over time. It's so important. Thank you. It's really lovely to be here and share ideas with you and, and be energized by Chihiro's energy as well. So appreciate the invitation. Okay. All right, great. So that's it. I'll see you guys all in two weeks. Um, I'm thinking about the next topic as we uh, face to the east with my show. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everyone.